If your master bus EQ looks anything like this, something's extremely wrong. Let's fix it next on Music Surgery with me, Dr. Bob. Hey you guys, quickly before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And don't forget to check out the Doctor's Lounge, my store, and the links to some great samples below in the description of this video. Think about this. If your song has 30, 50, 100, even 200 tracks in it, every EQ move you make on your master bus is like making an EQ move on 30, 50, 100, or 200 tracks at the same time. Seems a little much, right? Although EQ on the master bus is certainly normal, it isn't going to necessarily achieve the clarity or separation the way you want it to. Let me show you what I mean. All right, you guys, before I start this, I want to make sure everyone understands that EQ on the master bus is not wrong and very ordinary. I have EQ on my master bus. My master bus is right here. And forget that for a second. Um, I have this EQ. Very slight. I mean, that's not even a dB. That's not even a dB. That's... A little over DB, uh, DB, but very small Q, things like that. Now, this is what channel EQ can look like. Very drastic, some of it, dramatic. This EQ here for a master bus would be drastic. I, I, just, I just put this in to show you that big moves like this on a stereo bus are too much. And it's killing your sound. So let me take that off because I just did that for the demonstration. So if I need, for instance, more high end in a track, I'm not going to just boost the high end on the master bus because I'm boosting the high end on 88 different tracks. I mean, do I really want more high end in this one? Or this one I mean I've done what I want to to these tracks already to make them sound good in the track so if I'm boosting high end I'm <laughs> I'm getting high end on all this so let me play this and let's EQ it together properly Okay, so if I want a little more brightness or a little more high in energy out of that, well, then I would think to myself, well, what, what would a song like this, where would that high end come from? And the first thing I think of would be the top end of the guitars or the cymbals. So here's my cymbal track. Let me look at this. All right, let's put some high end on that alone. And let's see how that turns out. Let's look for some high end. So up here is the kind of clean part of the symbols and this is kind of that crunchy broken glass broken plate kind of sound which is great to cut through tracks. So before. With some EQ. So let me put that in the track and turn it up a little bit and see if we already have more high end energy. Without that, already a big difference going back to my tracks, going back to my groups to find out where 
different energy exists that I haven't brought forth <laughs> and bring that out into the track instead of just making a sweeping uh, high end here in the master bus that's that's bringing high end out in everything. And I don't want high end out in everything. Um, let's go to the guitars. Um, this time I'm going to go to the guitar group and let's bring out a little more uh, high end there. I'm not sure that that's going to really make a difference. So I've struck out. No, I don't need more there. So let's go over to, let's find out where else I could get some more top to the track. There's this drum. Let's see what this is. Okay, again with the cymbals and a little more of the, the top, that 4K kind of bite of that snare. What do we have here? Oh, look at the buzz there. Okay, we're already brighter. Let me turn this down a little bit since I've EQ'd the brightness of that. Okay, now let's go for the bottom end. Instead of just uh, turning up the bottom end to everything here, let's look at um, let's look at our bass. What does our bass look like? Okay, a little more down there around 60. So let's go to the kick drum. What do we have here? Okay, we've got some nice low there. Um, we're obviously um, side chaining with the bass. Let's just turn this up. That looks like... There's no more low I want to add to that. Let me just turn it up in the group. Okay, so that quickly, we've gone back to tracks and groups to use EQ there instead of on our master bus, which, like I've said before, I don't want to turn low end up on 80 things or high end up on 80 things. Less is more on the master bus with compression as well. Let's see what, like, let me show you again. That's what's that's what's going on. Tiny little bits of just kind of searching and poking and get a little feel of what feels better. Let's look at our compression. Very little, 
Very little. What, listen to the punch go away. The more I compress. That's how quickly, with a small move, a track can be ruined. Bring it back down. And all the snap is back. So, remember, when EQing on your master bus, it should look a lot more like something like this than something like that. A good rule of thumb is this. If you're making tiny EQ adjustments on your master bus, you've detailed your individual and group tracks properly, and your mix will be much clearer and punchier in the end. In most cases, with everything on your master bus, less is way more. Thanks as always for watching. Give me some comment love and a thumbs up below and hit me at drbobmusicsurgery at gmail.com if you want to say hello or you want me to work on your music. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you the next time the doctor's in.